This time something a little bit different. An acquaintance of mine uh, from the internet video world suggested I try to tell a story so that people will actually understand what's going on. So today we decided to go out to Wade Off-Road. And hopefully I have a better day than uh, last weekend. It's still kind of cold and snowy. Had to stop by the convenience store here and uh, make a few purchases so we had enough change. Weight off road is seven dollars a day. As you can see, Chris started out pretty good. She's got a nice smile on her face, and everything looked optimistic. wasn't too cold, wasn't too warm, despite all the snow and whatnot lately. Okay, yes, sometimes I carry her keys, but uh, uh, inevitably there would be a bad omen, and this time it was uh, Chris's bike not wanting to start. Uh, after another long interlude of trying to get all our gear on and ready to go. Now here I'm hoping it's the kickstand down. But, uh, when you hear that sound, it's not fun. At least when the kickstand isn't down. Oh, well, let's see what we get to see. Eventually I remember to look down at the charging dongle and see that this little red LED indicates the battery is down. And about the time I'm thinking I'm going to get to push start this thing, a uh, friendly neighborhood hero emerges with cables. My battery's toast. My battery's toast. Uh, take a few minutes. Right under here. You got cables? You can do that. I can get it off here if you got a moment. Yeah, well, just about the time you think you're going to get to grunt and sweat, uh, Good Samaritans do still exist. Now the only task is try and get the panels apart, uh, which you got to take, I think, a lot off on this bike to get to the battery, uh, without inconveniencing the guy too much, uh, just filling his truck. So I'm uh, trying to beat that end up sort of forgetting to, to film anything of the actual jumping, but we managed to make it work. I just held the uh, cables on contact since they couldn't bite to the little, the little uh, lugs on the battery. But uh, eventually we, we got it started and uh, Good Samaritan was on his way. Wonderful. just a few moments after that. Well, so were we. So here we are getting rolling after arriving. You may notice Chris starting off very tentatively, but keep in mind she has, we figure, less than 20 times ever on a bike, spread out over nearly five months. It's just uh, life and weather and whatnot getting in the way. And uh, our last outing wasn't so fun. She managed to drop several times. Uh, I think she dropped once on the right and bashed the bark buster in holding her brake on. She didn't notice this and neither did I because the bark busters had worked so well to 
protect the levers. So continually it was a problem and the next four drops uh, were at the next four stops. And uh, basically the bike would slow down enough that the brakes would grab and down she'd go. Um, any rate, so you'll notice she doesn't have a Bark Buster on that side, but the guys at Bark Buster have been uh, very helpful for getting me the new uh, little backbone bar for that. And we don't do much off-road. These are Turin's tires. She's, I would like to blame all my calm and passiveness on her, her learning, and I'm trying to be careful for her, but that's not true. I hadn't ridden off-road, really, and... 20 years or so and it certainly wasn't on a, a pushing 600 pound 1200 GS so I'm going extremely cautious and trying to learn careful I still have memories of putting my uh, left foot out while my leg was still broken and uh, dropping my Buell that actually wasn't I don't even think a year ago I'm not sure so, a whole lot of caution here. Good for you. Turn it off. See where you're going. <laughs> I'm trying to keep you in the camera. Hey, there's somebody in a car. This is the first time I noticed a car had pulled up. And, uh, we thought we had the place to ourselves, which is preferable since we're so bad and so slow. We don't like to be in people's ways, uh, and we certainly don't like to have uh, high-speed bikes coming from all directions that we're not familiar with. Just generally consider it better if uh, we get the place to ourselves so we can go putter around at our own rate. not be a problem. <laughs> we have intercoms if you're wondering if I seem to be talking to myself or to her at a great distance. They work really quite good. Um, here I'm just being extra gentle on the throttle. Well, last time I was out here I came across heavy and got the front way high, which startled me. So I end up stalling it instead. Um, keep searching for that happy medium. but. Uh, I just haven't gotten used to the weight. I have a, a mental problem in my head that says you can't take this heavy of a bike and do these things. However, I know you can. It's the bike will do it all day long. It's the rider in this case. Here I start uh, laughing kind of like an idiot. I was uh, a little surprised when the thermos on the back of the bike had slid forward and I sat down on it. And then you get that feeling sometimes when you sit and something's wrong and you seem to stand up leading with your pelvis in a weird kind of way. Uh, well, happened on the bike while I was trying to sit down so I could put my foot down. But uh, that's not the only time that this uh, thermos full of coffee is going to be entertaining on this little trip as it turns out. I <laughs> <laughs> Here I've put the camera on Chris's helmet, just velcroed it on there, and she heads off to go down here and turn around or go somewhere. She finds out it's um, a little easier if you keep the bike balanced or go a little faster or something. Yeah, yeah. that was a... yeah. Here Chris tries to pick the bike up herself. She wants to get to the point where she can do that, make her more comfortable. She's done it before, 
but uh, a little practice on the technique. It's it's about the maximum she can pick up, I think. But uh, she can if we uh, if we kind of figure out how she did it once before. So uh, we'll let her give a try, and then nope, too tired today or too problematic. So we'll go ahead nope. and get it up and get it on the way. That was nice and slow, and I just gave the camera so you didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> So here off I go while Chris is taking a breather uh, down this little zigzaggy thing and uh, eventually here I'll run up against a, a big old mud hole and uh, decide not to try and go through that. I find there's a little alternate way around there to the left so I will take that and go through these tiny little ruts with this tiny amount of mud in them. And somehow, in the process of going through that, I get completely out of whack and in a ditch. While uh, Chris finds out how, how far away it is when walking as opposed to riding. You know, coming over to help. We'll just speed this up here a little bit so it's not uh, terribly boring. But as you can see, there's quite a bit of mud around. It's a combination of sand and dirt, which isn't that bad most of the time. But the mud is... Uh, Nice and gooey, ooey, fun. Yeah, you made it most of the way. So here you can see this silly little tiny rut with a touch of water in it that seemed to get me all out of whack. Okay. And then I'm off in this mud pit. It, it doesn't look that bad with all the... I have a hard time calling it a mud pit. I feel a little shallow about that. But it's, uh, it's actually a lot slimier and gooier than, than you might think. I don't know how mud can be both sticky and slick at the same time, but there you have it. So, uh, nothing for it. Pick up the bike. It's not too bad with two people, even though it's, it's uphill. You can't really tell what it's uh, up a side slope and then sort of uphill leading. The fisheye lenses on these cameras kind of shallow that out. I tell Chris it's uh, possibly going to get muddy here, and she immediately backs away <laughs> oh, <laughs> to say, well, I was hoping you'd help. <laughs> so she obliges here in a moment and decides uh, the coffee is important, so uh, we'll pull on the bungee cord that's holding the coffee. That's a good one right there. Yeah. Now, I'm wondering about the sound the bike's making now. But didn't quite put it together until just here in a minute, I realize. There's traction control on this bike. I have to turn that off. Keeps cutting out the engine. Doesn't want to let me spin the rear wheel. This is where knobbies would really be valuable. They would definitely help you uh, dig out of things. This is always my concern with the big bike and uh, being sort of by myself most of the time. Uh, I'm afraid that I'll get it in the mud hole and not be able to get it out. Here I got the back wheel out of the back hole and into the front hole. So that was nice. And then uh, Chris comes around the other side to uh, help uh, in a different way. Okay. That's probably good. There's a little bit. Oh, we're pushing on that thermos there. we got to save the coffee. Not sure that's actually helping me push the bike out at all. But uh, it is helping to save the coffee, so I suppose I can understand that. They, uh, these things are important. Chris is working pretty hard to keep herself out of the spray here from the back tire. Uh, and it is pretty sticky stuff, you know. Adobe houses are made of mud and straw and goo, as you can see. I finally get smart and try to pull it backward at an angle, and uh, that helps a little bit. And with pushing, pulling, prodding, eventually it comes on out. 
it's nice to know uh, I can get it out almost by myself. Is it? Well, after clearing all, much of the mud off the bike I could with a stick, I roll out of here. As you can see, my nicely mud-caked tires. Nobbies would have been nicer here, but the Turrences did fine. And then I stop up here to ask Chris if uh, she would like a ride back, but she decides uh, the precious coffee can ride back. And uh, it's either that or she lost confidence in my ability to ride. So that's eh, okay. Walking back's part of it, I suppose. It's sticking much better now. And of course the long walk after helping someone. With uh, just a little stop here to scrub off the mud on the tree, which I'm sure it appreciates. So here I'm talking to this fellow that showed up and that explains the other two cars, some uh, teenage kids of his. You never really know when uh, when you meet people out here how, how they're going to be. Some of them are not very tolerant and sharing, even though we tend to be very considerate and try to stay out of faster people's way and share. Uh, but these, uh, this fellow and, and the kids were all wonderful and uh, he was telling me about a uh, little route since hadn't been around here very much that might be pretty good for us and he decided to he said he would putter on over and leave me over there to see if I thought uh, we could get in and out and it would be okay to go on So he uh, leads me down that trail on the far side of the silo there. Uh, Chris comes up to this little parking pad. And uh, just up on the left, you can see him just past the crates. Uh, he points to this uh, nice trail. And of course, uh, now I am just right in the middle of rut zone, mud zone. He pulls on around uh, the way back out after showing me the, the entrance. And I'm thinking, there is no way now I'm thinking, okay, how do I get back to the pad? See, he brought skills and the right bike, and I brought a uh, heavy bike and nervousness, but I saw this path and it looked pretty good even though it was rough. I think he came back to see that I wasn't completely stuck, I'm not sure there. Or just to show off that he knows what he's doing. <laughs> uh, so I, I eyeball this route quickly. Uh, uh, decide all right well might as well go for it uh, that's me just beyond the crates there after I moved up through the mud and in a moment I take off and do one of the bounciest little rides but that's what they say is go for the better traction even if it's uh, even if it looks like a rougher road and so bouncy 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 on it goes but uh, may not have been the best route, but it wasn't full of mud and muck, and uh, my tires handled it well. At any rate, I decided to probably no on that one this day. At the same time, a handful more people are showing up behind us. Oh, I don't know. A little while later, Chris uh, seems to get completely focused on these rut things in front of her and forgets about, well, the tree. Now, here again is one of the cutest sounds anybody ever made when they're just about to crash. Listen. Uh, 
Now, before I can get turned around and back up there, this nice guy and his uh, nice sons or neighbor's kids or whoever they are make it over and help Chris pick up the bike. And they're all nice and polite. Then I hear him say, this a little nice bit. Now, this is not really something you can blame him for, is it? So I explained to him uh, Chris's writing background and mine, and he seemed happy for Chris. Uh, she has good excuses for slightly poor showing, but uh, in reality, I don't have that much excuses for poor showing. I've uh, been on a bike way too much. Not in the past two plus decades, but uh, not really any any valid excuse for seemingly a uh, complete novice. But uh, Chris, with less than 20 times on the bike, he actually seemed to appreciate and have some good respect for her. Now this is uh, much later in the day on a completely different set of trails, but in the same area. We keep moving around as more people show up trying to stay out of the way, as it were. Um, but Chris, I guess, being extra fearful of the mud after having to help me drag my bike out of it earlier in the day, she keeps seeing little bits of mud and, and going off and plowing through the grass instead. So, so far she'd done a, a great job of avoiding them, but until this point she uh, she seems to miss the one right in front of her. Oh, there's my hole. Yep, but I don't know if we're going to be able to get it stand up here. Okay. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Now tell me what I need to do. Now here's one of those areas where the dual sport tires just sort of let you down. They still work great on road and whatnot, but as soon as it becomes soup, they just spin. It's a relatively lightweight bike, and it just wedged itself in there. And yeah, I could rustle it out a little more. Uh, properly but uh, usually I try to roll back and then go at it again I couldn't get any back out of it um, or I less of a weenie I probably could have done something different but nonetheless uh, well as always we'll get it out I don't have any kind of master plan I just keep yanking on them till they come out but uh, this is entertaining two of us uh, not communicating well uh, trying to pull it out. Of course, it's in first, and uh, I just assume she's pulled in the clutch until I eventually say, you know, why don't you pull in the clutch? And then, uh, not surprisingly, oh, it comes out right easy. Yeah, that's kind of amazing there. Now, she's made this involved plan where she will uh, go up the grass on the left and then turn onto the, uh, the crossing little path of dirt on the right. She doesn't seem to want to uh, ride on the dirt. But you'll notice as she takes off, she keeps her head straight where the bike's pointed, just about in that tuft of little weeds straight ahead. And uh, you're looking that way, you tend to go that way. So straight on up. And after a while later, it started to rain, so we called it a day and headed back to the house. And uh, had another wonderful, fun weekend uh, doing things that uh, we don't know how to do on bikes. Uh, we barely know how to ride, at least off-road. Okay, kind of both. Uh, depends on who you're asking.